Hello fellow crafters, Lori here with the Crafty Connection. And today I have a video again using the paper towel foil and masking tape. Um, I've had several requests to do another one of these and um, so that's what I'm going to do. I do want to show you, I did do some more since our, my last video. I did one with a cute little sunflower. This one is a pocket planner. Um, put some yellow florals in there to match and these are just really cute to hang on a door or wall whatever and I did some envelopes let me show you those I did uh, this little one this is just a small envelope with a hanger and I put some blue flowers in to match the um, pieces that I decoupaged onto the envelope you can see the flowers are in the envelope, the back of the envelope, and then there's the front. And I did a bigger one. And this one I put on a sign. So it's just a nice big envelope with decoupage designs, flowers to match. You can see it's the shape of the envelope here. Here's the back of the envelope, and then it's just attached onto this little board here. And then I also built a water can. Hopefully I can get it into view for you. There's the front of it, and the handle, and the top. Um, which would be adorable to put fake flowers in here to match. Um, this would set really cute somewhere. And then I just got a... Uh, watercolor print of some flowers and I mod podge or decoupage that on both sides super super cute so today I'm going to do an envelope for you um, and then we're gonna build something different for spring and we'll get started let me put some of this away and then we'll get started Alright, so what we're using for the video is we're using some white school glue, like Elmer's glue, mixed with some water. I already have some pre-made. We're using some heavy-duty foil that is not non-stick. Because if you use non-stick, your tape will not stick to it. Some basic cheap paper towels and some masking tape. Doesn't have to be this wide, this is just what I have. Um, I do not suggest the Dollar Tree masking tape. It doesn't, uh, just doesn't work well for this. But any other masking tape should be fine. And you're going to need some cardboard. You can use, let me get this out of the way. You can use any kind of cardboard. I have a box full of cereal boxes and other things. I use this frequently. Um, you just cut it down and then you can piece it together when we build our uh, spring decor coming up after the envelopes. Then uh, I'm going to use some of this and show you how to piece it together to make it. And for the envelope, for the big envelope, I am I did get this chipboard. It's a thin chipboard. It's the same consistency of a cereal box. I got this from Amazon, and these are 12 by 12 sheets. So I'm gonna use one of these for the envelope. You don't have to, you can piece together cardboard to get it any size you want. But this is for the bigger one. And what I did, is I took, Okay, so what you want to do first is take your cardboard, whether it's cereal box or whatever, and you want to maneuver it into this shaped corner to corner. And then I just kind of give it a press here in the middle just to give it a mark. And then I'll do it again on the opposite corners. I just want to get my center for this one, making sure that this is even up here in the corner, like so. And I just wanna make that little mark. And sometimes I find it easier 
just to find that center mark and just make a little X there with a pen or pencil or whatever you have. You're never going to see any of this, so that's perfectly fine. And then I will take the center here, or I mean the corner, one of the corners, and put it right up here to the center of the um, X and then just press it down with my fingers. And flip it over and do the opposite corner. Do the same exact thing, line those up. And press it down. These do not have to be perfect, but try to get it as close as possible. And then the bottom one, you're gonna bring the bottom one up about an inch to an inch and a half. And you just want to bring it up and line up your sides so they're even or flush. And if they're not perfect, you can trim them. No problem. And then just press that down. Now, as you can see, mine isn't perfectly flush here, but this side is. And all you have to do there is, once you have it up there, just take your scissors and just cut whatever's hanging off there. Like so. Alright, so now you have the base of your envelope. Now at this time, you can do a couple different things. You could take your corner and just cut it into a little circle if you wanted to. I'm going to fold mine down. So I'm just going to try to get it as even here as I can. And I just find that easier for me when I'm putting my florals in. And you can just tuck that down in the middle there if you'd like. And just play with it till you get it how you like it. Or you don't, you could even just cut it off, which is what I'm going to do. Alright, and so at this point, then, what I do, you could staple this here and here, you could glue it, I'm just going to use tape. a new roll so I got to get it started okay so I'm just going to put my tape here cut a slit just to get it to fit nice and tightly and hold that side down like that and I'm going to do the same thing here like I said, you could glue these down with hot glue, regular glue, um, staple them if you wanted to. I'm just taping it because that's what I have. So there it is together. And now we have an envelope shape. So now you'll be able to put your uh, flowers into here when it's done. We can decoupage on the outside of it. And then what I'm going to do is also take some tape here and put it on my edges, holding them together just to, just to hold them together better. So when I go to build something, what I do is I'll go to YouTube or to Google Images and I'll type in it, um, pics or images of what I'm looking for. And then I just use those as a visual to build things. All right, so once you have that together, the next step is to take some of your heavy duty foil. And we're gonna cover this. And I completely just messed up. So, we'll stop this. 
All right, guys, sorry about that. And so I have the envelope and the foil that um, <clears throat> you would cover this all with the foil, which I will do with you. But I wanted to also, while we're doing this, is show you another way I did it that I think is a bit easier. And that is take your, um, I'm just going back with the same technique as the envelope when I put it uh, together. So I'm just making my folds in it. And this one, I'm not going to, I'm going to foil this and paper towel it before I do the putting together of it. Sometimes this is a bit easier to get when you're doing things like pockets and um, that kind of stuff. It's just a little bit easier to get it in to the middles. And I just want to show you on that real fast. So what I do is I get in here and I get really good um, creases. I'm just going to use this little tool. This one is either from the Cricut or from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure. Anyway, so all I'm doing is just pushing this down and giving, getting those creases really good. into it so I have the envelope shape and then get it folded down again and I am going to cut this one also because to me it's just a bit easier So we have this shape here. Now I'm just going to video this way for you because it is a lot easier. Um, the other way, I just picked, learned this actually not too long ago. So. Alright, so what you want to do is take your foil. And just cut up, pulled off a random piece. And I'm going to just add some tape to it here to hold it. over and add some tape to hold it now the reason for the foil and the masking tape is because when we put the glue mixture on here it is a watered down glue mixture and this gives it gives this cardboard which is paper a protection from that wet so we don't get any mold on these when they dry. And several people ask me. Okay. So all we're doing is just keep layering up this foil as we go. Connecting it with some tape. We want to get both sides, front and back, covered with the foil. And we can just take these sides and get them all folded up so everything's nice and flush. Now over here, we have this little corner, so where we cut the piece off on our envelope. We just kind of fold that down. And like I said, as you can see, these do not have to be uh, any specific size. You can just work them and you get everything covered. It's okay if they overlap. And then get it all covered with the foil. Just putting the pieces down to hold everything in place. Little P 
piece of the corner there on our envelope edge. Get this side and that will be covered. Alright, so it's all covered. So now if you were doing it with this one, you would do the exact same thing as just cover it. It's just harder to get it in here and to get everything covered with the foil and then the tape, which is why I'm doing it this way. I've done it this way and it is, it is difficult to get that in there. So we're going to do it this way. All right, once you have the foil on it, like so, what I like to do is go ahead and fold my pieces back in. They're already in there and they're already creased. I'm just putting those creases into the foil. Fold this one up again and just press it in there. And you see you still have your basic envelope shape. I'm going to open this back up. And now I'm going to cover the whole thing with the masking tape. And I'll just start anywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. This can be overlapped just like with the foil. I'll do a few pieces and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. But you can see all I'm going to do here. And there goes the bark bars. Hey. Always have to make their, their appearance. what I'm doing here. I'm just getting this side done first, wrapping it around like so. So all I'm doing is getting this covered with tape. So I'm going to get both sides covered, front and back, and then I'll be back. Alright, so I have this all covered with the foil and then the tape. So <clears throat> both sides, front and back, just cover it with tape. So now, <clears throat> if you were doing it this way, which is how I originally started the video, you would have to get the foil all in here and the tape, and it is hard to get in there, which is why you can scratch this idea unless you want to do it this way and go with this route. All right, once you have the... Um, tape all on there. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Then you want to, again, push these down. Just give them a good crease. Again, the cre or you can feel <clears throat> where the creases were already at. And then just want to kind of give them a, a press and a push. Like so. And then sometimes you'll get some air in there. Just press it all out. Super easy to do. And then you, oops, I did that backwards. Oops. I wondered why that didn't feel right. Anyway, just press that back out. Anyway, so you have this together. Here's your envelope ready to move on to the next step. Except I'm noticing that my end is not straight. So I want to straighten that out because it's going to bug me. You don't have to. It's just me. So I'm going to line it up there on my line. Can't see what I'm doing there. All right, line it up here. Stick my ruler there. Wasn't that much off, but it was bugging. Me, so I'm going to cut that down. And this is where I've told you in the past videos that this stuff is, if you make a mistake or something's not even, it's so easy to fix. So let's see. Still just a little bit off. Anyway, I'm just going to cut that down a little more. I'm happy with it and now I'm happy with it and then all you're going to do that 
all you're going to do to fix that up is take some another little piece of foil and we're going to add that on this is how easy it is to fix these add on to them super simple so I'm kind of glad we had that little mistake so now I can show you how to to fix these if needed and you can even do this once you have the paper towel on and it's dry you can just it's a little harder to cut but you can use a utility knife or you could use scissors too but you, this is how I when I'm building something if I decide I want to add something to it you know I just go in and do some cutting and then do some mending Fix her up. It's not coming out and it's not really going to make a difference so we'll leave it there all right so there we go we have it all retaped and now it is even and me happy. All right, next step. You're going to get your paper towel. I'm just using cheap paper towel. And I have the paper towel. It's not quilted. It does have some design in it, but it's not a quilted. And you don't want to use like the three or four ply. It's just way too thick. Anyway, so once you get your paper towels, I'm going to tear mine in half, like so, set it to the side, and I'm going to get my blue mixture. I put mine in a container with a lid so I can come back and use it, and you can see it's just perfectly fine. So what I do to, to get this is I'll add in my glue. And then I'll just add some basic tap water. And it is the consistency. If you took frosting in a container and you put it in the microwave, that's what it would look like. Or almost like a buttermilk consistency. That's how I like it. Now, you can do this one of two ways. Let me put my sleeves up because I don't want to get glue on them. You can take your paper towel and dip it in the glue and wipe off the excess glue, which is how I normally do it, but I have found another way that I like. And what you do is you just stick your fingers, or you could even get a sponge brush. I just use my fingers. And I spread the glue, just put a nice, um, nice little layer here on the whatever you're covering. And then you can see this is why we put the foil and the tape to give it that barrier so we don't get the cardboard wet and we don't get any mold. All right, then you just wanna take your paper towel and start anywhere you want. I'm gonna start right in the middle. And you press that into your glue and then you get back in there and you just cover with glue until all of the paper towel is nice and saturated. And 
Now, depending on what you're building, when I build my tree stuff, I will do it different, but I haven't made a video for that yet, and when I do, I will show you. So that paper towel is nice and covered, and you just want to, when you are got it on, just brush out the air bubbles, and there we go. And then we'll take the next piece. going to go this way. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the flap here. And I'm just going to add this piece, the next piece right on and do the same thing. Get these good and saturated. Okay, and then I'm going to go up here to the top. to have to overlap some and that is perfectly fine. Now for these little small areas here, we're going to come back because we'll tear down some of the paper towel into smaller pieces. So we're going to go ahead and get this side here. And this, this way of doing it, which you can do easily enough for these um, size projects this way it's just really fast and the, the longest part of this is the drying but I pop these under a fan and they are dry within about an hour Good and wet. Okay, and then we're gonna move down to this piece here, doing the exact same thing. Pressing it down, getting it nice and wet. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is take another paper towel and I'm going to rip some pieces off. These do not have to be perfect at all. And I'm just going to piece these in. And I do find when you rip them, they form better on the, okay, let me explain that better. So you know how we overlapped everything in here. So when you have a cut corner versus a tore edge or whatever, they seem to blend in better. You can just kind of rub your hand along those torn areas and they just blend right in so you don't get a choppy looking uh, project. I hope that makes sense. I should have did this before, before I glued it. But you know what, it's okay.
again. I'm just overlapping. I'm just making sure I get all the area covered and glued. Rubbing in where they connect, kind of, just to blend them in. back over here to this edge. So all I'm doing is just piecing those um, pieces into where there, there wasn't any thing. I got two more sides to do here. And my paper towel is a hot mess here. Perfectly fine because it will work. All right. As you can see, I'm just putting little straggler pieces on there. And again, putting the glue on, kind of just rubbing or pressing those torn edges into the other piece. So this whole side now is covered with the paper towel mixture. These I will do um, when we do the other side. So I'm just going to leave these like this. I'm going to go set this under the fan and let it dry. Come back and we'll do the other side. Alright, so I put this under the fan and it is, I would say, 90% dry. Took about an hour to dry um, and so now we're going to work on the back parts so what I'm going to do first is get these piece, these straggler pieces glued on and I'm just going to get my fingers in that glue again and I'm just going to whoops I forgot to get some on the side there and I'm just going to pull them and cover them just like we did on the other side. Making sure I get those edges there. Keep going around, getting these pieces down, getting that edge. So yes, this way is definitely a lot easier than to do it once you assemble the envelope. And it really just kind of depends what you're making. If you're making something with a pocket, then this way here is a a lot easier to to get it get it all covered And when you're putting the pieces up, just make sure you're pressing on the edges there to get it all adhered on. I 
clean those edges up. So once you get the back pieces put on, the straggler pieces, whatever, the overlap, then we're just going to fill in the middle. A little bit easier when you get to this side because you already have your most of your edges and corners covered. And then just again pressing those sides in real good. Pressing those sides in. Then we're just going to take our glue mixture and get it wet everywhere else. And it's easy to tell where you've been and haven't been with the glue because it's where the glue is at, it obviously will be wet, but it also has a nice, easy glide over it. Whereas it's when it's dry, it doesn't have that. So you can easily just, there we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our paper towels. And I am going to overlap them a little bit on the edge. And I am doing all this in real time, which I do all of my videos, because I like you to see exactly what I'm doing and how I'm putting it together. So there's no questions. I mean, they're not saying there's any questions, but so you can actually see. And you can see that it really doesn't take much time to do these at all, just getting those air bubbles and those edges pressed in, and getting the next one. And again, overlapping just a bit. And I just, I like to do this just to make sure we have a nice edges on these. Now you can see here there's a, let me get the rest of the glue on, I'll show you what I mean here. Right here you'll see there's a wrinkle and that's from the fold and that's perfectly fine because these are going to be folded back in to the envelope shape once this is dry.
Same thing over here where there's a wrinkle and that's fine. covered good and then let's put our last three over here overlapping again just a little bit so as we're putting the glue on this side here making sure you kind of just pressing those edges in so they all kind of go together so you don't have a bunch of seams showing on your paper towel. So you just push these in like so. And then we'll add the last two again with that a little bit of overlapping. All right, let's finish these up and then we can do the ends and we'll get it drying. When I'm putting the glue on, it may look like I'm just like globbing, which I am, but I'm also pressing and sliding the excess glue over. So it's, it does have a nice layer, but it's not overly saturated. And then once you get all of that on that side, everything's in there all right then we're just gonna finish up these ends and how we're gonna do that is sorry we're gonna rub a little bit on the bottom and then fold these over pressing them down as we go And another thing I forgot to mention, when you're drying these, um, you don't have to use a fan. You can just let them air dry. It just takes longer. But when I put them down on the fan, I do set them on the on some parchment paper or wax paper just so they're not sticking when they're drying. So I'm just taking some glue, rubbing it on the back side to give this something to adhere to. Then I'm taking more and I'm rubbing it over it. I know you can't see, you can feel to do this and then we, we will flip it over when we get them all down and make sure everything's nice and smooth. You can see this literally takes no time at all to do these. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it over now and go ahead and add more of the glue, pressing this down. 
And this time I'm just holding it up in my hand because the other side is completely wet. So I'm going to go around again and just add the top coat here of the glue. And then once I get that down, I'll go around again, pressing on the edges and pushing all the seams together. Just want to make sure we have it all tacked down. All right, which we do. So now I'm just going to probably just lay this here on my glue. And I'm going to take my thumb and go along that edge. Go here and just make sure this is all blending in. Getting the edge so it's nice and sealed. And getting all of these edges pushed down nice and tight. habits there. So now I'm going to take this back in in front of the fan and let it dry completely. And then we'll come back and we will finish this one up. Alright guys, now this is completely dried and covered on both sides. I don't know if you can see this here, but it's got our original creases from the envelope. Alright, so what we're going to do now is put this together and what I'm going to do is just kind of work the flaps of where we had already had made our creases just to give them a little uh, flexibility there the top one we don't have to worry about all right so I'm going to go ahead and push these two ends in in our envelope, if you remember the part I cut off here is the bottom of the envelope. And I'm just gonna push this together. All right, and there we have our envelope. So at this point, you can do a few things. You can glue this down. You can staple. I am going to glue I think. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some clamps. I might staple it too. Let me see if we can get it down how I want it. No, I think I'm going to glue. I think it's going to work out better with glue. And I'm just going to use some of this super Super glue would glue. Okay, and I'm going to open it back up. And I'm just going to glue these areas here. Oops. Where it's going to be. Down. So I just put the glue here and here. I guess I should do both sides. Okay. And then I'm going to push this back down. I did forget to put some glue right there. It's probably best to put the glue on this whole thing here. Oops, I got too much. But that's okay because we can wipe it off and it dries clear. So I just went ahead and glued it all. And then I'm going to press this down. But I'm going to also grab a baby. Well, here's a napkin. 
wipe this extra off here. And then I'm going to take my clamps. I just get these from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp this down. Here, this will dry clear and it'll just add to the sturdiness of the envelope so there I go with it just have it glued down and that will take a little bit there to dry that sit there and dry and in the meantime while that's drying we can turn it over and actually paint this side and what I like to use is these foam brushes this is just one that I cleaned off and I'm going to re or recycle it and I'm going to do this one in some mineral uh, colored chalk paint by Waverly. It's, it's about empty. I always save my napkins if I go to a drive-thru and they give me a whole bunch, I save them just for crafting purposes. stirred up in here. To be honest, I don't even know if there's going to be enough to cover this, but we're going to give it a go. It's very thick. wonder if I add a little water, that, that'll make a difference. I'm curious. Like I said, this is not a whole lot in here and I want to use this color, so let's see what happens. We'll experiment together. Now it's kind of watery. So let's see what we get. I have to go grab a plate to put this on because I don't have one here. I'll be right back. Alright, so I got a plate here. And let's see how this will work. It's actually, once I got it mixed up, it's a perfect consistency. And I'm just going to go ahead and... I like using a foam brush with these because there's a lot of little grooves and little nooks you got to get into. And it's, a, it's just easier to get those with these foam brushes. And it will take two or three coats to get it, it all covered. And I'm just going to get it painted here. Got a loose piece of something right there. It should dry up with the paint without any problem. And you see how I'm doing this. So I'm doing this video in real time for you. So you can see, because that's what I've been asked. I've had several people email me and ask me to do it in real time. So that's what I'm doing. And if you don't want to see this in real time, you're 
more than welcome to skip on ahead and to grab the sides where the clamps are. So sometimes I, what I do to get ideas on things to build is I'll go through Pinterest, for example, and I'll look at things, or I'll look at a lot of wood projects, just decorative wood projects, and that's not my wheelhouse. My husband's good with the wood, but I'm not. So I just found a way to duplicate things in a simpler method. All right, so I got that side dry. Um, I am going to pause it while I dry this with my hair dryer, so I don't think you want to hear that, and then I'll come back and we'll check it. Alright, so I ran the blow dryer over this one for a couple minutes, so where it's dry enough to do another coat, and if you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, I'm going to hold it up. Hopefully you can see where you see little, um, parts that didn't pick up the paint when I dried it and that's what I'm gonna go back over and focus on I'm gonna get in here and just you can see it darkened up quite a bit when it dried so I'm just gonna kind of go in here and first just get all these pieces that doesn't have paint on them some more paint. And then I'm just going to go over the whole thing once I have those pieces covered. Getting those sides again. this till I get it all covered. And I'm just going to take my brush different directions just to get in these grooves. Now the second coat doesn't have to be obviously as precise as the first one. You just want to make sure you have all those covered. Which we can't do where the clamps are yet. So I'm going to pause it again and run the blow dryer over it. Alright, so I ended up um, I took the clips off and painted it before I realized I wasn't recording it. So, and then I dried it, added some parchment paper down so nothing will stick. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull these clamps off now. These should be dry enough to, yeah, they're sealed on there nice. That's what I like about that super glue, wood glue. It, it may not be 100% dry, but it's, it's, uh, it dries relatively quick so now we're just gonna go ahead and do same thing but on this side hush getting those ends and sides and get a little more of this paint
So what I do when I get to this part here, because obviously you're not going to get way down in there to paint, and since we fill these with the florals anyway, I just get the edges, the part that you can see with your eye. I would hope that once these are all done and the flowers are all in it, it's nice and filled, nobody would be opening it up to peek inside. I do open it a little bit just to make sure I get that deep enough in there. That you can not see the base color. Alright, then I'm going to go ahead and get these edges. And I will tell you that when you're doing these things with the glue, um, sometimes you'll get little fragments of whatever you were working on. For me, it's usually some cardboard or a piece of foil, whatever, stuck in this glue mixture as you're um, putting it together. And that's perfectly fine if it's something small like that. Pick it out if you can, and if you can't, you'll really, <clears throat> you'll really never even see it. So I had a piece of card, little piece of cardboard stuck on mine, and I left it, and I don't even know where it was anymore. So. So the wood glue, the super glue wood glue that I used, I would say I clamped it together probably a total of 15 minutes and it was dry enough to take the clamps off it. Now I'm going to make sure I get this good here. There we go. And I'm going to come here make sure we have that all covered getting that making sure the sides and all that are covered good and I got to set it down to get in here you just get a hair bit more of this We are literally going to have just enough of this paint to finish this up. I'm glad I did water it down because the consistency is perfect. It must have been really thick at the bottom of the container there. Now for me, I don't mind touching these wet. Yes, you'll get some paint on your hands, but you know what? I'm a crafter and I always have paint paint or glue or something on my hands so it does not bother me in the slightest nothing a bit of soap and water won't remove okay so I'm going to pause it again and dry this layer and then we'll come back and fix the pieces that are coming through All right, so I went ahead and dried that layer, and hopefully you can see where there's the spots coming through. So again, I'm just gonna take my paint and go back over those. Kinda work in my sponge in there to get them all covered. When I was drying the first time on this side, I did hold this open a bit to make sure I could get that paint in there good and dry. And along these edges, just want to make sure everything had a had a good coat of paint on it. Make sure everything's nice and covered. Just going over, filling in those areas where their paint didn't get down in there. All right. 
that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to pause it and dry that. Alright, so we have this one dry. So I'm just going to kind of look it over and make sure we have every everything covered with the paint. That's a little bit of the glue still dry in there. But yeah, it is good and secure. Looks good. So the next step I do in these is I dry brush on these. And I like to do that, A, because I want to match some colors that I'm putting for my printables. I want to outline the envelope, give it a little more um, definition. So what I do is um, I have my printables here. Well, I printed two. I have one that looks like a postcard with a rose, and then I have a bird. So the bird one or this one. Decisions, decisions. So this one, I think I'm going to use this one. So the colors in this one is a like a darker tan, some pink, got a little bit of dark pink, a little blues, um, some off-white. So for dry brushing on this, I'm going to probably use three colors, maybe two. I'm going to use some of the antique wax. I'm going to use some folk art vintage white. I may use some pink. Pink is questionable at this moment. So what I do next is I'm going to use the colors, <clears throat> excuse me, use the colors that I definitely want to use. Let me put the clamps away so I have room. And I'm going to get a chip brush here. Get these from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add some. I think first I'm going to use the antique wax. And you don't need much. You don't need much at all. And let me grab a piece of paper towel. going to take our chippy brush. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. So I'm going to get some of the antique wax on the whole brush. Dab majority of that off. And I'm going to start by going around the edges of the envelope with this antique wax. This is Waverly's antique wax. And this I'm using to start my definition of my envelope. And I'm just going to go around the base of the whole thing. I'm going to go and get that, these pocket parts of the envelope. So I'm going to So hopefully you can see the outline there of our envelope. And then now I'm just going to go in some areas that aren't quite dark enough for my liking and just add a little more. It's always easier to add more. Then, 
I'm gonna get some more there. And then I'm just gonna lightly go over the envelope itself. Just to give it a nice look. And then I'm gonna turn it over. Now a lot of times you won't even see the back on these because they'll be hanging up on a wall or like I did with my other one. I um, put it on a, a piece of wood and made a, a hanger with it. But me being who I am, I like to finish both sides because if you're giving this as a gift to somebody you know, and they don't have it mounted on, or you don't have it mounted on a board, then somebody's going to see it, and always best to have a finished product. I'm very lightly putting this on, because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be as dark as the edging. Alright, so we have that part on. And then now I'm going to take my paper towel, flip it over. I'm going to add some of the antique white to my plate. This must be getting down to the bottom too. And then for this, I'm going to use the same brush that I did for the antique uh, waxing. Dip it in there, dab most of it off, and I'm going to go around the edges very light because I don't want to take much off of the, or I don't want to lose the antique wax underneath. So I'm just very lightly got it a little dark there and that's fine but very very lightly just going around it a little darker there than I wanted and, but it'll all go together when we're done and then I'm gonna do the same thing just lightly take some white and put that in there. Oops, way too much there, but we're gonna fix that. And for the back, I'm just gonna run a tiniest bit. Excuse me. Okay, so the part here that we got too much on, we're gonna go back and grab some of that gray, or the mineral color, I guess is what it is. And then we're going to just dab some off, and then we're gonna go back over lightly. And then maybe grab some more of the antique wax here. Perfectly fine. I'm going to quit messing with it. Alright, so we have our envelope here. Now is when you decide, do you want to put some of that pink in or leave it as is? I think I'm going to leave it as is because I'm going to have my florals in it. So... We're going to leave it as is for now. And we're going to Mod Podge our, our uh, flower on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
get this. I don't know if I just use a piece of um, cardstock. You can use printer paper, whatever you have. And I just take some Dollar Tree tissue paper and I tape it over the cardstock or printer paper, whatever's available. And then I have my paper for the next time. And then I'm gonna let me move some of this out of the way so I don't get my tissue paper in it. I'm gonna decide here on my so I'm gonna go right below this butterfly here. And then what I like to do for that. Is I like the tearing of it of the tissue paper because it blends better in my opinion so I'm just gonna get some water and I'm just using a cap here of my water bottle put a q-tip in there and I'm gonna just kind of wet it in a a little squiggly line there tear it up to that wet line and then you see it just tears very nicely with the wet you don't have to worry about tearing it where you don't want to tear it and then I'm going to do the same thing on the sides I just find when you tear it, and you don't have to use the water, you can tear it if you're comfortable tearing yours without tearing it in half. I've had issues in the past, so I just prefer to do it with the water. And I did use an inkjet printer. I don't have a laser printer. And... I don't find, or I don't have, too many problems with bleeding. Maybe you might get a little bit there where you water um, the edges, but to me that just adds to the rustic look or the character of, of these. And I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but I'll mention it again if I did. Um, I've been, you can get printables off your computer for free at different places. You can go to the Graphics Fairy. You can type free printables and then whatever it is you're looking for. And which I've done that a lot. And now what I do is I go to Pinterest and I type in what I'm looking for and put printables. And then I get tons of different printable options that work really good for these. And they're really pretty. You could probably find them. I haven't looked for any seasonal ones yet, but I'm sure they would be easy enough to find. So now I'm just putting some Mod Podge down here. on my envelope where I want to put my printable. Get that good and covered. it all down with my finger trying to get as many air bubbles and wrinkles out as I can if you notice there's some extra there and that's perfectly fine because it dries clear and we're gonna seal the whole thing anyway 
So then when I get down here, I have a little extra. And I'm just gonna tear that extra off, like so. And then up here, I'm just gonna kinda tuck it it here and just make sure everything all right then I'm gonna put a layer over it to seal this image down now you don't have to use tissue paper I've done these using um, images I printed on regular computer paper they work fine. I've used scrapbook paper. Um, I just like the way the tissue paper lays down and the way it kind of blends into the, the project. And then I'm just taking along the edge of the bottom to make sure it has a nice seal go. Now this does not take long at all to dry. So I'm going to let it dry. <laughs> go get my fingers washed. Come back. We'll seal the whole thing and move on. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this project done. So on my other envelope I made, I showed you where I mounted it on a board and um, Put a sawtooth hanger on that one this one i'm going to do a little different um so i'm going to take my little crocodile hole puncher thing if you don't have one of these you can use um probably a paper punch or just something sharp because we're just going to make some holes so i'm going to go in here and right here on the edge and pop a hole and I'm going to come to the other side and do the exact same thing. Try to get them even. Okay. And then I'm going to do my uh, make a twine hanger here. And I like the whole method better just because Personally, I think it looks better than gluing on the back of these. So I'm just going to pop my piece of twine through the hole here. And I'm putting this on first because I'm going to be putting my greenery and my flowers in the envelope. And it's just a whole lot easier to do it first. So I'm going to make a nice knot there. Clip off the end. Pull it nice and taut. And I'm going to put a little dab of glue under mine, just for a teeny tiny bit of extra hold. You don't have to do that. That's just me. Okay, then I'm going to decide how long I want my twine hanger to be, which I want it to be lower than the envelope. So about right there was good. And I'm going to take it through the other side. And then before I knot it, I'm going to make sure my hanger's where I want it to be. So about right there, I think. Perfect. Make my knot.
just going to make sure I got my hanger where I want it, which I do. So you can see it's right there. When you hang it, it'll hang like this. Okay. So I am going to put twine around my envelope with a twine finger bow, but I'm not going to do that first because I want to get my greenery in. So I'm going to take a piece of, this is just a piece of the green um, floral foam. It's the softer foam. I like to work with this better than the white foam, but you don't have to use this kind. You can use any foam you want. You don't even have to use foam at all. I use it just to get a little more stability for my florals. And I'm just going to stuff it in there. that. You can see I have it nice and just stuffed in there. No glue required. And then I, I have some of this uh, boxwood greenery. I got this from Walmart. I think it was like, like $2.97. So I have a bundle of that here. Just one bundle. And then I cut two smaller pieces here. And these are going to go right over here. And I have some roses. I cut off a rose pick from Walmart. These were $1.97. And I just grabbed a few things of baby breath off another, I believe, Dollar Tree pick I had. All right. So I'm going to take my boxwood here. And I want to find the two, or two or, yeah, the longer pieces of them, which they're really about the same. All right, so I'm gonna start just by putting those two longer pieces kind of in the middle. And then I'm gonna spread them out a bit. clumped together. Well, they're going to be clumped together, but you kind of get my point, I think. And then what I like to do here is, so this one I want to sit a little bit this way, so I'll just take a little dab of glue and put it on a couple of the leaves. And press those down. It just helps to give it a little more spread. doing here is just giving it some help to spread it out a bit. So that's good enough. Then I'm going to take the next piece. I'm going to go behind that. And just put that there in the may not even need this piece. We'll hold that on that piece. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then I'm going to take my flower. And I'll put it right there in the center. I'm using the pink roses because that's what's on the uh, printable. And then these I'm going to kind of position up a little higher and I'm going in from the back. And the same with this one. And I did choose the one that was open more to put in here. So now I'm deciding, I'm going to cut some of the, or pull some of these off here. So 
get it into that bone. There we go. And then these, I might go ahead and just glue these right into here just to cover those knots. Slide those right there. another one. And then these two I need for up here. Alright, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Alright, then I have some of these little baby roses. And I'm sure they have a real name, not baby roses, but today they're baby roses. those in there. I have a double one and I'm going to stick it in the back. But I want it to be a little bit higher. So I may have to glue. Let's see. So we're going to add a little glue onto this one because it's barely hitting the floral foam. Just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. little baby rose, rosette, baby rose, I don't know what you call them. We're going to stick him right here. And I just glued this one in because I had to cut it because the pieces were in, they were in twos. All right. And then next I'm going to and you can do these any, absolutely any way you like. Um, this is just how I do my florals. And I, I do always start by putting them in first to see how I like the placement. And then I pull them out and start putting them back in. That's how I knew what I wanted to cut and, and have. Okay, and this one we're going to go put here, right there. And what I'm going to do here is cut that leaf off. on the end of this one. Now, the reason I'm putting these here, I will tell you, is because when I put this printable on, it was, I put it on a little bit crooked. So I'm kind of doing that to hide that fact. And these two pieces that I cut off, I'm going to use for to kind of make even this out over here. I'm going to add this right there. And the other one. See, so there's always, if you make a little mistake or you don't have quite enough, there are always ways to fix it. And there we have it. Now they look more even. All right, and then I have a few of these baby breath pieces here that I do want to incorporate in. I'm going to put one right here at the front. And these are not long enough to hit that floral foam. So I'm just going to glue them down in there. There's one. I'm going to 
get three pieces here. One, two, and three. These I'm just gonna randomly place in where there's little spots. Right, so there's our florals all put in nice and pretty. Now I'm going to make a, a little twine bow for right here. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna make a finger bow. How I do those is I make leave some tail, pinch it between my middle finger and my thumb and then decide about how big I want it. I'm gonna wrap that around about four times there. Cut it. Then I'm gonna take my twine and I'm gonna go down between the string and the finger here. Come back up, go through the loop here and pull. And take it off my fingers. Making sure I have the placement how I want it. I don't like the way this one came out, so I am going to do it again. Sorry guys, I'm going to actually burn my twine first because I don't like the fuzzy or the big pieces that's on it. So if you don't like those fuzzies or those big chunks that come on the Dollar Tree twine, Just run a lighter down there and that'll get those fuzzies right off. Alright. Alright, let's do this again. <clears throat> Between my middle finger and my thumb. Wrap it around. between the twine and your finger, come back up, and then go down through your loop. Grab it and make sure it's even, and pull. I just kind of play with it a bit until I get it how I want it. And then I'm going to add my glue right here to the center. And glue it in there. And 
mean, you could use ribbon. You could leave this part off. It's, it's all about personal preference. And then I'm going to take a little piece of this baby breath. Could put a rosebud there if you wanted to. Rosebud, I think that's what those are called. Funny how words come to you later. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it. How we did the envelope, how we decorated it. Got the twine hanger. And then this is why I always do the backs. Because if you don't mount this on a board, <clears throat> you, whoever you're gifting it to or selling it to is going to see that. So there we go. That one's done. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I do a build. So you can see the uh, process and how easy it is to build pretty much anything you want. So let me get my stuff out and we'll begin that build. Okay guys, this is part two of the video and this is gonna be the build, the bonus part of the video. All right, so I'm just gonna show you how I do my builds and how I piece it together so you can build pretty much anything. We're gonna build an Easter basket today since Easter's coming up. Um, but like I said, I showed you the watering can I built in the very first um, part of this video. I do some other things. Um, I have this one started, I'll show you. And what I'm doing with this, this is going to be um, like a grass piece. Of, I'm going to put some moss down here. This I'm going to make look like a wooden pole. And then I'm going to attach a sign here that says, Welcome, Welcome Spring something. So that's something I'm working on. But we're going to do the build here. So you're going to need some cardboard. I'm going to use some cereal boxes here. And then I have a piece of cardboard same uh, de density as the cereal box you can see um, I got these off of Amazon I'll post a link for them but you can use any cereal box anything you want so what I need to do first is get a base of uh, base for our flower basket and I'm going to use this bucket you could use a plate small plate whatever whatever you have that's round in the size that you want to use so I'm going to go ahead and get this one over here to the corner of my cardboard because I don't want to waste it. And I'm just going to trace that circle out around this bucket. Okay, so there we have it. And then I'm going to cut that out. doesn't have to be 100% perfect, we just want a round circle. Now, I've never made a bucket before, this is my first go at it, so we'll see how it goes, but I'm just showing you the techniques I use when I want to build something. I will go online and I'll find a image of what I'm looking for. Um, when I did the watering can, I just put pics of watering cans, and that's what I use for a visual uh, model for building. This time I just put Easter baskets in, got some ideas. I'm not going to do a super fancy one here. I'm just going to do a basic Easter basket just to give you the, the concept of how I do it. Alright, so once you have this done, then we're going to need to make the round part of the basket. And for that one, I'm going to use cereal box. You don't need the greenery for this. And I think I'm going to use the Cocoa Puffs. Because I'm 
Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I don't even see that on the box anymore. Does anyone remember that commercial? Where the, I'm Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Kind of giving my age away there, aren't I? One second, my light's going off on my ring light here. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the flaps here. You can see the seams from the box. So I'm just cutting the flap pieces off here. And like I said, when I did the watering can, it was kind of the same concept here. When I did that one, I did my cylinder first for that one, and then added my bottom after it was done. But I'm going to try it the opposite way this time. And I do not throw these away because this could be a handle, this could be anything. So I do save all my bigger pieces. Because you never know what you're going to want to build. And if you saw my cat house video, um, it was a few videos back, this is all the same concept of how I did that, how I built the cat house. And you can use cardboard. If it's something that's in a box, you can just use a box for your base. Um, doing the same exact way like we did the envelope. Cover it in foil. So, and it, depending on what you're building, it would be... Uh, done in pieces and then put together um, sometimes you don't have to do that it's just you know total preference I do a lot of these builds I really enjoy them I do a lot of miniatures I build miniature houses in tree stumps for the uh, forest fantasy animals and I will make their beds their chairs their tables all in this method which I will show you one of those one of these days here. Maybe even build one for you. One video. They're, I mean, they're just, just, I love it. I can't even explain how much fun they are. I enjoy them. They're relaxing and they come out super cute. Okay. So we're going to move all of our scrap over here. And we're going to take these and it doesn't matter which side is in and which side is out. So I'm going to put these two together first, and I'm going to tape them, and that's going to give me a long enough piece to make my column or my cylinder. And I do want to go around this all the way to make sure it is good and attached. doing this build also in real time so the video is going to be lengthy but you have two different uh, projects in there and that way you can start it stop it go back um, to get the ideas the concept or how I do it and then you're just going to take it and make a circle with your cardboard and then I'm going to take the circle that I cut out and I'm going to piece it on here so I get about the size that I want. And then once I do that, then I'm going to tape. So I'm going to get a piece of tape ready. And then I'm going to put it on here. And I like to look inside because that shows me when I have really good coverage. And then I can kind of play around with it once I get that on there. And that looks about perfect to me. I'm just going to stick a piece of tape here to hold that in. And then I'm going to tape both sides.
now I'm going across the seam where the two pieces connected. Like that. And then I'm going to do one more piece on the outside of it. I want to make sure that is good and secured. And then inside, you'll see the end of where we put those together. And I'm gonna go in and just lay that tape across there. Because they, they came together at two separate parts, the inside and out. So we're just gonna make sure we have all of that. Those seams nice and covered, which we do. Okay, next, we're gonna take the bottom. Now let me do, let me say this. In the first video, you saw how I put it together um, first and then put it together. But a lot of builds, if there's no pockets or small little areas to get into, I will put it all together and then do the foil and paper towel. So what I'm gonna do here, is set my bottom on there how I want it. Then I'm gonna take my first piece of tape here and we'll lay it on the top. And then just come down with it. Like that. There will have a few little gaps showing and that's perfectly fine going to make a crisscross shape there. Trying not to pull too hard because I don't want it to, to curl. All right. And then once I have, oops, let me show you what I did that I didn't want to do. I left a gap here. Undo that one. Sorry. Okay, so now once I have, you know, at least a piece of tape, at least one on there, then I'm going to take some more tape and I'm just going to kind of fiddle with it till I get it. Put a piece here on the bottom like that. And I'm going to put my hand in and just kind of pull it out so it's nice and round. Pushing the tape down here and then connecting it. Same here. You just want to make sure that you have it all nice and and flush before we start trimming it. Because you don't want to have a funky shaped basket. That one's fine. So, for the most part, we got it. Next, what we're going to do is come down here and trim that extra cardboard. Just cutting right through the tape. Just a little bit here. Just any, any overhang once you get it put on how you want it. Then, where we cut that tape... put another piece of tape on it and then that way it's much more flush to hold that in for us okay now once we have that part done we want to decide okay how do we want our how tall do we want our basket to be and I don't want mine to be this tall because it looks more like a colander now and not a um, basket so I'm going to go from the bottom to the top and I want my basket to be about four inches tall. So I'm gonna make a little line there on the four inches. And I'm gonna do that in several places all the way around. And this is so when I cut it, I'm gonna get a nice even top. Because I cannot cut even eyeballing it to save my life. 
Then once I have those all put on there, I just take my ruler and connect those lines pretty much there. And I use my ruler because like I said, I can't draw a straight line without one. Just like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect here. You just want to get a bit, you know, a, something to go off of to make sure we're getting a nice straight cut. Okay, now that we have our line on there, you can do this with your scissors, you can do it with a utility knife. I'm gonna start mine with a utility knife. And I'm just gonna... Okay. Maybe I just lied. Well, I'm gonna at least... Make a start. So I have something to start cutting on, or cutting with. So I just made a slit here. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut down to my line. Right to that line. And I'm gonna do it again right here. And this is gonna give me a space to cut out and then I'll be able to cut around it a whole lot easier. Not a perfect cut my line's still right here but now I can get in here and I can start right here cutting around following that line and then by the time I get back to where I started I can easily just go right on this line here and even this out. Now I'm not making a huge basket here. You can make these any, absolutely any size you want. I'm doing mine in a smaller size. You don't have to. And I'm gonna save this piece I cut off because we need handles for our basket. So I have my little tiny basket here. Not tiny, it's about a hand size. But like I said, if you want a bigger basket, then you know, just make it bigger. All right, so I'm going to decide how big I want my handle to be for my basket. And I'm thinking because of the size of here, about an inch would be perfect. So I'm gonna take my paper or my cardboard and I'm gonna measure in. I'm gonna cut this piece off here. There we go. Either side, I'm gonna measure in an inch and make a mark. And I'm gonna do that the way down ensuring I could use my um, paper cutter for this but I don't want to hold the blade so I'm going to just do it this way I'm just going to mark it an inch and I'm doing this the same same way I did the cylinder because I want to get it even and then I'm just going to take my ruler and do the same thing. Line up those marks. Make a line. There we go. And you can use a utility knife and a ruler, or you can just use your basic scissors. I'm just going to cut 
down that line. Like so. And I have my handle. Now these don't have to be 100% perfect because the way we make these, just like with the paper towel foil, I mean, nothing's perfect. So to me, that looks about, about perfect. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so we have that. Before I attach this, I'm gonna put my foil and my tape on this and this. And for the foil, I'm gonna cut probably about three inches, a three inch strip. pieces of tape ready. And I'm going to fold in the ends first and just attach those right there. I'm just cutting my tape down because I have the white tape. Then I'm going to fold up the edges. as I can up against that foil and then I'm going to fold it over and you just want to pull it as you as you're doing this because you want to make sure that it's nice and tight up against the cardboard One of my dogs needs to go out, so let me pause and let her out, and I will be right back. All right, sorry about that, guys, but when they gotta go, they gotta go. All right, so now I'm gonna cover this in the tape. and snug there along the edges like that flip it over and do the same thing it's nice and snug right up against that foil and cardboard and then I'm going to trim my ends and just bring that up there for the moment Same thing on this side. Let's get it covered. Flip it over. I'm going to cut my ends first. This time I'm going to pull the ends. sure they're up there nice and flush. This time I can turn that one over. And then I'm just going to take some of this extra tape here and add those to the ends where those side pieces were just to make sure all the flaps and everything are down. Everything is nicely taped down and nice and flush. Alright, so 
that part's done. We'll set that right there. And now we're going to tape the foil and tape the cylinder. Now how I like to do these is in strips. Strips. These do not have to be perfect or straight at all. And then what I'm going to do is start down at the bottom. Take a small piece of tape. And tape it down there. Like that. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to press it down into the corners down there kind of creasing it and then just straightening it out here on the sides and add a piece of tape just tear it down because we're on a circle so and I'm going to keep doing this tear at the top to get this to go around. Flush on the circle there. Like that. And kind of add a piece, just a small piece down there to hold that one in place. And then I'm just going to keep going around doing the same thing. Put that piece down. And then guys. Hey. Hush. Sorry. When you got four little wiener dogs, they got a mind of their own. Add a piece of tape down there. Stop it. down there. Get my next piece of tape ready. Go on down here. And there is a, a lot of overlapping at this point with the foil and that's perfectly fine. And you just want to make sure we get it all covered. When you're doing a circle shape it's you're not going to get just a perfect flat uh, piece you're going to have to put it in, overlap. So I just put it in here and then I take my fingernail and I just kind of press it into the shape of the bottom. And there's extra pieces, you just kind of work it in. Cut some of that down so we can get this Fold it over. So I'm just going to fold it and fold it like that. And then I'm going to try to get it smooth, as smoothed down as I can. In there. Get a piece of tape to hold that piece at the bottom. So once I have that all in the middle, then I'm going to just kind of go in with my fingers and press everything in as best I can at this point. You just want to make sure it's all nice and flat and flush. Alright, then we're going to do this side. I'm just going to flip it over. And again, got some strips. And this time I'm going to start 
right in the middle. And just press that down. And I'm going to grab me some tape. And I'm going to start on this side and put some tape on that to hold it in. And then the same on the other side. And then you're just, as you're working this in here, any overlap, you're just going to kind of press it all down. This piece here is going to drive me nuts. So you put a piece of tape on that. Okay, and then I'm going to get my next strip. This time I'm going to go about right here. this one up and back in the middle and just tape that in there again pushing these down that we have all of, all of this covered and underneath here is still some of the cardboard. Almost like doing a messy wrap of a Christmas present. Oh. So again, just pushing stuff down here to make it flush. Tape these two pieces down and grab some more foil. And this should do it here with these last strips. Okay, go back upside down. It's all going to be covered. Bring it up and back in, pressing that inside nice and smooth. in there and smooth as you can get it. And then the outside, same thing. Gonna go around and smooth. See we missed a piece here. Don't need much though. So we're gonna cut some of this down. And just put it right there. Tape it down there on the bottom. <clears throat> Pushing in and taping. Okay, once we get back over here, we're just going to press everything back down. And there we have it. Alright, now we're going to tape it. Start right here. Pushing that down. I'm not making these super long to go all the way around because it is at a curve. 
and I want to make sure that we get everything on that curve as smooth as we can. Press the two corners in first and then the middle. Right. Okay, now we're going to go this way. We're going to get a long enough piece to put some at the bottom and pull it kind of taut as we're going up. And then press that tape down. Get it in there as smooth and as tight as we can, pressing all this as we go. And we're going to go right next to that piece. Go down, again, making this as flat. Now, you, right, okay, let me give you an example. You can see right here, there's a little flat. So all you're going to do is cut that flap like that and if it, it seals right up. If it doesn't, just add another little piece of tape. Then taking it around and smoothing it. I'm going to do one more on camera of these sides and then I'm going to do the rest off so we don't have a 20 hour video going on here. But I do want to do this in real time so you guys can see, A, how easy it is, and exactly how I do a build. Okay, so again, right here we have this flap where the tape came together. I'm just going to flip that off. It actually sealed just fine, but if not, just add another piece of tape. All right, so I'm going to finish the outside like I'm doing here. Then I'll come back when we're going to finish the inside. All right, so I got the whole outside and bottom covered in the tape. So for the inside, it's pretty much the same. I'm going to start um, on the side here. But when you're coming down, you want to make sure that is pressed down in the uh, bottom part of the round area. Sometimes smaller tape is a little easier to do those parts. Anyway, you're just going to take it down and press it in. Then you can press the bottom in. But you want to make sure you don't get any gaps. Not gaps, but like, I guess like air bubbles. And you can do it from the bottom up, or you can do it from the sides down. Either way is fine. Just make sure you get those right here. The inside parts right down here, up against the bottom. So if you put one down and it's pulling or it didn't go down right, all you need to do is put your scissors in there, cut it so you can just tear it back open, press the tape down and redo it. So I have the side in there. And I'm going to press this down kind of slowly, get it pressed into that corner, then I can lay it down like that. So I'm just going to keep doing this. 
pressing that down in the corner and then pressing the bottom in. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be covered and as close to those edges in the bottom that you can get it. All right, I'm gonna finish this other half there off camera and I'll be back very soon. All right, so I have it all covered inside and out. And then what I wanna do is just kinda of take my finger around or my hand and just make sure everything is smoothed out as much as we can get it. Pressing down that any of the tape that didn't adhere. Good. And this also gives you a chance to make sure you have all your foil covered, everything trimmed how you want it. Looks good. Okay, so there we have the base of our basket. And now we're going to connect the handle. And you can do these in a any way you want. What I like to do is take my handle here and just kind of curve it a little bit before I start putting it on because I don't want it to be funny looking. Which is, so like I said, I just kind of mess with it until I get it how I like it. All right, and then you wanna decide if you wanna hook it on in the inside or the outside. Sometimes the outside is cute because you can put little beads or something here before you paint it and make it look like it's put on that way or the inside gives you a more clean look, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna go with probably the inside and I'm gonna staple this on to start and this is just a regular everyday stapler nothing fancy and you absolutely don't have to staple you can glue this is just what I'm gonna do you can try to make sure that's nice and even So our basket is formed. Now is your time to kind of play with your handle. All right, and then the next step we are at is to do the glue and paper towel. So let me get my stuff ready and I'll be back and we will do the next step. All right, so we're gonna move on to the paper towel part of our Easter basket. And I do have to make up some more glue mixture, so I'm gonna do it for you on camera so you can see about the ratio that I use. So, I just got my glue that I gotta try to open. And I'm using the just Amazon basic white school glue. I have a big jug of it. I will post a link below for that. And I'm filling my little bowl here up about a little less than a, than a quarter full. This stuff does go a long way. I'm just going to add some water. Tap water is fine. I'm just using my water because it's sitting here. And I'm just going to put in not much. Maybe, I think I maybe put in a half a cup of water if that. But you always want to start out with less. And till you get the, till you see the consistency. If, it, if you need to add some more, then you can. And then you just want to stir that water up in there real good. Until it gets 
like a heavy cream. I guess that's a good way of putting it. About a heavy cream um, look to it. See how it just like that. And then for smaller projects like this, I take my paper towel and I'm just going to rip it into three, um, like that. And I'm going to go ahead and get this paper towel all but the bottom, let it dry. So I'll do a little bit on camera and I'll do the rest off camera. So I'm going to start with the inside. I'm going to put my glue down here on the bottom, making sure I get in the edges real good. And then I'm going to put some glue on the side here that I'm going to start on. All the way down to the top, getting the rim also. So I'm going to take my first piece of paper and I'm going to go start at the bottom in the middle, pressing that down and pressing it up into the edges real good. And then along the side and get some more glue and just get that paper towel good and wet and covered in the glue. Making sure you get those edges and up against the edge at the bottom. Just gotta make sure that's all covered with the glue. And then go ahead and do the same going up the side. And then pressing this down, pushing air bubbles out as I go. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you these techniques again because I showed you. <coughs> In detail in the beginning all right so I'm just going to continue all of the inside the handle and the outside let it dry and come back while I'm here I also want to mention so when you're building <clears throat> with this structure now you could have easy made the water can that I made out of this you would just have this higher up and you would make your cylinder as big as you wanted your water can you would add the handle to the top the little piece on the front just google a picture of water cans on um, on your computer and you'll see then you make your spout here and then your side handle and then you would do everything else the same and then paint it as decorated and all that as you see fit with this kind of thing you could also make a wishing well you have your circle here you would just build up your side and then your roof there you could add the little bucket here, however you wanted to do. I showed in my the first part of the video where I had made this, which is just going to be a cute little sign here with some grass. It's going to be a spring or Easter thing. So I'm going to do this one also and decorate it and dry it and all that good stuff and just show you what it turns out to look like. All right, I'll be back when these are all dry. All right, so our basket is all done and dry. So all I'm gonna do now is paint it inside and out and I'm gonna use a light yellow and I have my printables that I'm gonna Mod Podge on there. I've shown you that in the first part of this video, how I do that. So I'm not going to film it again, but I will get it all done, come back and show you the finished product. All right, so I have the basket all finished. I uh, painted it with a yellow, put a little white dry brushing, put these cute um, printables that I printed out on tissue paper. I put one on each side with Mod Podge and then put a cute bow at the top. Came out super cute. You could always put flowers in these, um, some Easter grass with some Easter decor candy whatever you wanted this would make a really awesome Easter basket for an adult or a teenager even or somebody that's into 
um, kind of a rustic, older looking style. And this is something that can be used all year or year after year. Anyway, it came out super cute. And then I want to go ahead and show you the other project I showed you the beginning of. Which was, if you remember, a base with these two pieces on here that were put together and taped up. And this is what came out of that. I think that came out super cute. You can see it looks like an actual um, <clears throat> log, like a piece of log made into a signpost. It says, Welcome Spring. It has a frog here. Some... Stop. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Some flowers and rocks. And then at the top, um, there's a cute little snail right here and some moss. All right, guys. So I'll put some pictures at the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And for those that were wanting a video on this technique with a little more clarification, I really hope this helped. Until next time, I hope everybody has a great day.